Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 15 where we left off because you because you have said this is what the people are saying the Lord has raised us up prophets in Babylon now they're in Babylon now some of Jeremiah it's 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 not time proper it's out of order but God can do that he's God the Lord has raised us up prophets in Babylon. That's the people saying it. Know that thus saith the Lord of the king that sitteth on the throne of David. Well, pretty soon that, that the kings of David sit on David's throne are going to be gone. The only next king will be Jesus Christ. And all the people that dwell in this city of your brethren that are not going forth into captivity. So it's Jerusalem. But they're not in captivity. Dwell in this city. It's Jerusalem. With the king still there. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, throat. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. That's all. Everything. Behold I will send upon them the sword. And famine. And pestilence. Those have been the three things. They're not listening. It's already begun. Nebuchadnezzar comes three times and the third time, boom, it's it's wiped out. It's destroyed. And we see the damage in Lamentations and we see the damage partially in Ezekiel and we see the, the, the destruction in Nehemiah. God is holding true to his word. And they're not repenting. I will make them like vile figs. Remember the figs? That cannot be eaten. They are so evil. That's the naughty figs. Now what the people are saying is. We have prophets here in Jerusalem. We have prophets here in Jerusalem. And God's like no no no. Jeremiah. Now what the prophets. They got. They have. You know, they're preaching fairy tale, whoopee goo, kind of make me feel good. Everything's going to be great. Peace and wonderful. And hallelujah. And we would run to Malachi, but Malachi hasn't been written yet. I will persecute them with the sword, the famine, and the festival. <laughs> That's double. It's been tripled and quadrupled. It's often in Jeremiah. And will deliver them to be removed to all kingdoms of the earth. Now, so this is not just Babylon. And today they're worldwide. And I talked about in Sunday school today is they have been kicked out of they've been kicked out of Russia, they've been kicked out of Poland, they've been kicked out of Germany, they've been killed in Germany, they've been killed in Poland. Even in the book of Acts, when Paul meets Priscilla and Aquila, I, I forget what it is, but they have they meet because where they were I think it's Italy but I'm not too sure they, they said, get out of here leave we don't want you here and it's funny because the Jews standing before Pilate you know I forget what it says we're we're not under bondage something like that you were under bondage under Babylon you are under bondage of Rome you were under bondage in Egypt. You'll be under partial bondage under the Antichrist. What do you mean? So, to be a curse. You know, there are, there are agencies, not, not America, not America, but there are agencies, let's say, in America, that cursed that Jew. In order to join their organization, whatever it be, you got to outright say, you know, we don't want to have anything to do with the Jew. We want them out. And, and other races, creeds, and people. But the Jew is a curse among a lot. They're curse of the, the United Nations. If the United Nations had the power over God, <laughs> let me say, if the, if the Middle East had the power over what God's power is, 
They wiped that Jew completely out, destroy him and kill him. America would go over there, kill him and wipe him out just to get the, the, the petrol. That's hap that's today. An astonishment. Now, well, what could be the most astonishment thing ever? Think about it. Adolf Hitler's plan was to eliminate all the Jews because they're to Adolf Hitler, not me, I pray for the Jews, I support missionaries the Jews. But to Adolf Hitler, they were the worst scum of all the earth. And his object was to wipe them totally out. And would it be astonishment as Adolf Hitler, if he never got saved, is in hell today? And he gets word in hell that Israel is still strong. And that all the Nazis have died off and gone to heaven or hell. And there is no Third Reich anymore. What happened? I believe Nebuchadnezzar isn't going to be in heaven if he's not there today. Imagine Nebuchadnezzar looking Man, we went in there full force. My nation, Babylon, is gone, thanks to my stupid son or grandson. It's gone. We people as Babylonians, we're gone. But there's the Jew. Imagine the Romans in heaven through Jesus Christ or hell. And in the eternal life to realize that there's a new earth. And I believe that new earth is given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the descendants of Jacob. You mean we're, we don't have the Roman Senate? We don't have the Roman leaders? Not if they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have them. That's the astonishment of the Jew. They're still around. Even in, in, in Abram's time, I'm not sure if he's called Abraham yet, the, 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 the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were wiped out in Abraham. Remember? Abraham, you know, he prayed to God about Lot, and he went to bed that night, he rose up in the morning, he saw the, the flame of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah in their neighbor city. They were wiped out during Abraham's time. Yet his children are still going. A uh, hissing. And that's, that's just, you know, like in the old movies. When he had the villains. And he come in with his wearing black and all that. You know, that was, that's the bad guy. That's, today they wear suits and ties and, and, and you vote for them. And a reproach. Among all the nations. That includes America. America has mistreated that Jew. Whether I have driven them. So there are Jews in your nation. That nation has cursed. That nation has been astonishment. That nation is hissing. That nation has been a reproach to those Jews. Because they have not hearkened to my words. Saith the Lord. Now let me ask you a question. Let me run to the church age. If God has done this to his people, Judah, because they have not hearkened to the words of God, have not listened, what do you think God's going to do to the Christian that doesn't listen to the word of God today? And if God doesn't pronounce, now we can't be cursed. But if God doesn't do something to the Christian that is in rebellion against the word of God, God will have to apologize to every man and woman in Judah that died during this period <coughs> from the sword to famine and pestilence, rebelling against the word of God. God will have to apologize to him if God doesn't do something to that Jew, uh, to the Christian. The people of Judah did not hearken the words of God. There are Christians today that don't hearken the word. You know, God will have to apologize to Eve and Adam. 
What did Eve and Adam do? They did not hearken to the words of the Lord. They ate of the fruit that God said, Thou shalt not eat of the fruit. They ate of the fruit. And what did they get? They got a curse. And if God doesn't do something to the Christians of the Laodicean church age where they're rebelling against the word of God, Adam, Eve, step up to the plate. I really got to apologize. I swear, out of all that sweat I gave you, Eve, all that pain of childbearing, all the sorrows that, that one day you heard that Abel was murdered by, by your other son. I, I've got to God ain't doing that. God is not going to do that. He will get to his church, to his Christians, and if it doesn't happen on the earth, those Christians that rebelled against the word of God will stand at the judgment seat of Christ and they will have wood, hay, or stubble, no rewards or very few rewards. You'll get ashes. You know what the people, the sword, the famine, the pestilence got? They got ashes of their city. The wood, hay, and stubble was destroyed. Because they had not hearkened to my words, saith the Lord, which I sent unto them my servants, the prophets, Jeremiah, uh, Isaiah, uh, Micah, rising up early and sending them, long before God's going to do the judgment. Remember, God already knows what's going to happen. But ye would not hear, saith the Lord. So, what do you do with the Christians that won't hear? They're not hearing. I have dealt with pastors. I have dealt with Sunday school teachers. And they won't hear. And they won't listen. Hear ye therefore the word of the Lord. Look at God. Because they have not hearkened to my word. Look what God says next. Hear ye therefore the word of the Lord. You won't listen. You better listen. There's no excuse. All ye of the captivity. Okay, now we're in Babylon. Now we're talking to the ones in Babylon. They heard. They listened. Whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babylon. But still they didn't listen. But you know why they're in Babylon? Because they didn't repent. You know why they're in Babylon? They didn't give up the God. You know why they're in Babylon? They didn't give up the grove. You know why they're in Babylon? They didn't give up the altars. Thus save the Lord, the host, the God of Israel. So what do you do with somebody who hates the Jew and professes to be a Christian like the KKK? KKK has got to have a problem with that. Oh, we're Christian. We burn crosses. And we're, but we hate God. I mean, we hate the Jews. We hate Israel. Uh, the God of Israel, what do you do with that? Gee, I wonder what their Bible says. Of Ahab, the son of Koliah, and of Zedekiah, the son of Mathereth, which prophesy a lie unto you in my name. They're in Babylon. See verse 20? There is false prophet. God didn't send lightning down. Don't you come up in the, in the church age today. Well, if that man in that pulpit, if he's wrong, God's going to have the ceiling collapse on him. No, he's not. He didn't have it collapse then. Don't you think that, it, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with my preacher, there's nothing wrong with my father, because God would give him a heart attack, God would kill him. No, he won't. Because he didn't kill the false prophets in Jeremiah's time, did he? Jezebel had 400 or 450. Or maybe 850. Now, Elijah killed some of them. <laughs> that prophesies unto you in my name. Oh, you know, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God led me to have this message. We gather here in the name of Jesus. And yet Paul says there's another Jesus. Just because that man in the pulpit or the podium mentions Jesus, 
doesn't mean he may be of Jesus. He may have another Jesus. I went for 18 years to a church that had another Jesus, and it was a Jesus that you ate. It was a Jesus that you drank. That's not Jesus of the Bible. I get people to come knocking on my door. Is Jesus God? No. You got another Jesus? Get out of here. Well, you know, we're of this religion, and Jesus Christ came over here in North America to places and people that archaeology never found. Get out of here. That's another Jesus. The Pentecostals have got another Jesus. That's a freaked out, messed up Jesus. And Baptists have a Jesus. Baptists have a Jesus, well, you know, we're not under the law, but then they go running to the law in certain places, but we're not under the law. And they got things and do things about Jesus that it's not scripturally right. Well, if it's not scripturally right, then it's not the Bible Jesus. It's another Jesus. And here they're preaching the name of Jehovah. Another one, you know, Yahweh. Nonsense. And there's other Hebrew and Greek names they called nonsense. Nonsense. Behold, I will deliver them in the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall slay them before your eyes. See, God ain't going to kill them. God will have people kill Capital punishment. You know what the nation of America is supposed to do? When you have false prophets and false teachers, you're supposed to execute them. You're not supposed to give them liberty. You're not supposed to give them freedom. You're not supposed to give them license. You know what's wrong with the Constitution of America? We allow the false worship of the false gods, of the false priests, the false preachers, the false religions, everything false against God and Jesus Christ and the King James Bible, the Constitution allows them. God doesn't. Now, me as an individual, I don't have the right to go and, you know, kicking statues over and killing priests and all that. But Romans chapter 13 says the government has that right. What did God tell Israel? When you get in that land, you wipe it all out. You know what America said? Allow it. Bring it. But tell the Christian, tell God of Israel, tell the Bible, tell Jesus Christ, tell everything that's correct and right of God in heaven, the God of it, tell them to get in the closet and shut up and be quiet. And then the foolish people say, we're a Christian nation, one nation under God. For... Really? Yeah, it's one nation under God, not a big G, a small G. You don't believe that. You don't believe the teachings of Jesus. You know, you, you, you misquote the, the Gospels a lot. All right, uh, here's the thing. Take all your money and give it to Washington, Jefferson, Franklin. Give it to them. Oh, no, no, it's mine. Give it to Hamilton. Give it to Abraham Lincoln. Did not Jesus said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar? Well, our money has dead presidents on it. Give it to the dead presidents. Uh, 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 oh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, we quote we quote the scriptures for your own benefits. All and of them shall be taken up a curse. God's going to curse the false prophets by all the captivity of Judah which are in Babylon. So see, there are people in Babylon. Saying, the Lord make thee like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire. And you thought Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo was the only one put in the fire. Read it. What did God say? What did God do? Look at verse 21. Ahab, the son of Goliath, and Zedekiah, the son. I mean, that's not the kings. Those are the false prophets. And God said that 
King Nebuchadnezzar took hold of them and put them in the furnace, and there was no third man or fourth man in the fire. You know what America does with her false prophets? They give them tax deductible credit. They're tax exempt. And then you're going to call for a revival. Because they have committed villainy. Now that's an interesting word. Now the proper, well the proper spelling is there, but there's also a spelling in, uh, in the dictionary, Webster's 1828. It's B-I-L-L-A-I-N-Y. And if you can see the video, not on the Facebook, it, it, it's in the Webster's 1828 dictionary, not the original Hebrew. It's a crime of action against de depravity. It is extreme depravity. Autocrucious wickedness, if you can see on the screen. So, this is serious crime. In Israel, in the homeland, and have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives. These are the false prophets. I've met in my time of being saved, I have heard many pastors run off with the piano player while still married to their wives. Or the piano player still being married to her husband. Many times you hear about people in the pulpit having affairs. Nothing's changed. I think Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. And have spoken lying words in my name. And many churches, many religions, including the Baptist church, does that. I've been in many churches, I've heard it. Those lying words could be perverted Bible, modern Bible. That changes the, uh, I prepare a mansion, but that changes the mansion. That tells you that the Ethiopian eunuch did not believe in Jesus. He was just baptized. Ooh, I feel sorry for these modern Bibles. I mean, I don't have enough grace. I believe a lot of people who wrote these modern Bibles are not saved. I don't think anybody who can mess with God's Word can be saved. Some people have the grace which I have not commanded them. You know, the Lord led me to this message. God's up. No, I didn't. You know, God is speaking to my heart. No, I'm not. God is leading this church. No, you're not. Or maybe not. I should say no. I mean, God does speak to me. But there are many out there. We are in the time of Jeremiah. Even I know. That's God speaking. And I'm a witness. Say, <laughs> imagine God being in the judge. All right. Call up your next witness. I call up Jehovah. Oh. Jehovah, do you swear to tell the whole truth and not, nothing but to do? So help me me. Wow. You know what else that's going to happen? Think about it. Think about the Bible. Think about the Bible. Think about the Bible. I heard today in church whether well, you got to read between the lines. I do that. You know, Mary and Martha about their about their brother to die. You know, Jesus was only here. You know, yeah, you know. Think about it. that. What's it say? God said, "Even I know and am a witness to what to the lying word." Think about this. Think about the judgment. Of those false witnesses that were sought for at the trial of Jesus. When those men stand at either judgment, I don't know if they got either judgment. Imagine they stand up there and the an accusation, well, they lied about Jesus and Nazareth. And the Sanhedrin will have to stand, and the high priest will have to stand, and maybe Pilate will have to. You got any more witnesses say that? Yeah, I got one more witness. Who's that? Me. 
Somebody want to swear the Lord Jesus in? I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me, me, the I am. I was there, standing there, and I heard them say those lies about me. We have a God that cannot, will not, is unable, is incapable of ever telling a lie. Oh, man. Can you imagine your lies being testified by God himself to say, I heard him say this? Can you imagine in the in the church ages, all of them, but especially the lies of seeing churches, can you imagine the lies that come out of that pulpit in the name of God, in the name of Jesus Christ? And God says, I heard that, and I didn't have him say it. I lost her over there. Uh oh. Thou shalt speak unto Shemaniah the Neolamite, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Yeah, I read that. I wonder what those people that hate. In the name of God, but we hate Israel. Imagine Adolf Hitler standing here. Who are you? I'm the God of Israel. Ooh. Okay. And you imagine all the crimes against the Jews that Adolf Hitler, though he never shot a gun, though he never flipped a button, but all the Jews he had cremated, all the Jews he had tortured, all of them. And can you imagine Jesus saying to Adolf Hitler, why persecuted thou me? Wait a minute, wait a minute. If Jesus doesn't say that to Adolf Hitler and all the others, like I, I'm just thinking Adolf Hitler. Alright, if Jesus don't say that to Adolf and all that, Paul, you want to step up here for a minute? i got to apologize for you. When I said, why persecute thou me, I, I'm just so sorry. I ain't going to say I'm sorry. I don't think it'll be brought up because it was all put under the blood, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We don't realize how powerful the judgments are going to be. And I keep losing my place. Right. Thus speaking the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, say, because thou hast sent letters, in thy name. Well, who does that? The popes. The big shots of religion. The, the scholars. Pastors. I know a pastor right now. His name is on everything. I support a missionary and his name is, is on the bank statement. Unto all the people that are in Jerusalem. Uh -oh. This guy sent word back to, in my name. To Zephaniah the son of Messiah the priest. And to all the priests saying. These are Jeremiah's crew. There are priests that are false priests. There are Baptist preachers that are false Baptist preachers. The Lord has made thee a priest instead of Jehoiada the priest. That ye should be a officers in the house of the Lord. For every man that is mad and maketh himself a prophet, that thou should put him in prison and in the stocks. Now therefore, why hast thou not reproved Jeremiah of Ananoth, which maketh himself a prophet? You know, anybody who speaks against us, shoot him down. Put him down. Put him in prison. Shut him up. Boy, I met some pastors like that. I met, you know, you're offending our church by, by, by that stuff you're writing, that stuff you're doing, the things that you say. For therefore he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, The captivity is long. Now this is the letter that we read in the beginning of Jeremiah 29. 
This is Jeremiah's letter. So Jeremiah's letter has been sent. It's been read. And this is what we studied the other night. The captivity is long. Build ye houses and dwell in them. And plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Yep, that's the letter. And Zephaniah the priest read the letter in the ears of Jeremiah the prophet. The false letter. This is the false letter. Now, you know, you ought to put Jeremiah in jail. And anybody who goes against us, you ought to put him in jail. You ought to de-church them. I had a preacher here in my house. I preached the truth. I taught you. Well, I don't know if I should get rid of you. Well, I don't know if you should really just leave yourself. I don't know what to do. All right, Zephaniah. He didn't give me one Bible verse. Not one Bible verse. And he never did. In other aspects. But boy did I give the Bible verses. He come up to me. Oh yeah, there's no such thing as a gap theory. Bible verse. I'll talk to you about it later. In my book. About Genesis. The commentary. I go through the whole thing. I go through those who are for the gap theory and those who are not for the gap theory. Because I'm 65, 45, whatever, no, 35, something like that. I give you both aspects. I'm honest, huh? Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, uh oh, <clears throat> send to all them that of the captivity, that's Babylon, thus saith the Lord. Concerning Shemaniah the Neolite, this is the guy who wrote the letter of lies. Because Shemaniah has prophesied unto you, and I sent him not. There are people who are preaching and teaching in the name of God, in the reference of God, in the standing of God, and the standing of the word of God. And God will say, I did not send them. Well, how do I know, Stiley? Study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You got to study that guy out. Now, we're not done with the verse. Gemini has prophesied in you, he's a liar. And I sent him not. <laughs> That's a liar. Now, watch this. What's the aspect? What is. Some of the people in the church, age, he caused you to trust in a lie. And I'm not talking about the Catholics. I'm not talking about the Charismatics. I'm not talking about the Mormons. I'm not talking about the Jehovah. There are people in Baptist churches who are, are men behind the pulpits, especially women. They're behind the pulpits. They are not preaching by God sending them. They are preaching of whatever reason. And there are people in that congregation that are believing that lie. Give me, give me, give me a verse. I just did. It happened in Jeremiah's time. They either could hear Jeremiah who's preaching the truth, or they can hear Shemaniah. They're taking Shemaniah. You see that? I have been called the type of Jeremiah. But I want to be married. I don't want to be unmarried. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will punish Shemini. You got that? You know those preachers that don't preach right, that God did not send? God will punish them. Either judgment, saved or lost. And his seed. I don't think that's going to happen. But unless maybe his son got in the ministry, and his son's son got in the ministry, and his son's son's got in the ministry. That has happened too. There are men in the ministry that put their children in the ministry and put their children in the ministry and put their children's children in the ministry because it's a family thing. Did God call your grandson? No, I, I put him in here. And they made a total mess and, and the ministry is totally far away from God. It began with the, the father was in the God. I got one ministry right now. The father is in the ministry. It went well. But as they got to the children, total mess, total depravity. I've known a preacher, I sat under his preacher, sat in his church, and his son went to seminary and said, 
I asked him, I said, did God call him to the seminary? Did God call him to the No, I put him in there because he's my son. What? And this guy came and preached one time. I'm going to have my son, you know, he's, he's visiting the Plum Seminary. And he, got, and he didn't even know what thrice meant. He tried to preach about Peter and deny th thrice. He had no idea what thrice meant. Really good. I hope he's not in the ministry today. He has, he shall not have a man to dwell among his people. This is Shemaniah. Neither shall he behold the good that I will do for my people. What's the good? Ezra and Nehemiah. Saith the Lord. Because he has taught rebellion against the Lord. What is the rebellion? He lied. He lied. Now let me give you a Bible verse about what I'm saying about the churches. 2 Corinthians 11. Verse 14. Uh, verse 13. In the church age, Paul's right into a church that's that's carnal. It's gotten right. Second Chronicle of uh, Second Corinthians eleven thirteen. Such are false apostles. We got false apostles today. Apollotic succession. Deceitful workers. They're not reliable with the church money. They're not reliable with the church ministry. They're not reliable with the work of the church, the work of, of Jesus Christ. They're, they're deceitful. I know a man once, he's, he was a church treasurer, and he joked and laughed, you know, he's Judas too, because he held the back. And people, why are you, why are you not having any fellowship? Why are you not having anything to do with that person? You should, because he calls himself Judas too. And that was even his email. He's dead. I don't know about his soul. I'll probably get kicked in the butt for saying that. Transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Transformers. Change before your I was a toy when I grew up as a child. They are the apostles of, of Jesus Christ and of Peter. We can change our pope line all the way back to the first pope of Peter. Peter wasn't a pope, liar. There are other religions. They have that, you know, we lay on hands, 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 lay on hands. You know, the twelve. Well, that's good because you know, there are family trees. They can't go. They can only go so far back. You can go all the way back to no marble. No marble comics. I mean, no marble. No oh, Transformers and marble. No marble. Don't you mar? Don't you go, oh, wow. You know who would marvel at what I'm going to read right now? People who sit under the ministry of liars. And they won't learn, they won't get it right, and they'll stand at either judgment as their pastors are at loss at the judgment seat of Christ, or they go off into hell at the great white throne judge. They'll be in marble. Oh, I thought he was right. I thought he was good. No marble for Satan. We know who Satan is. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. I've seen the light at the end of the tunnel. I had an angel visit me. Better watch out. That angel that visit may be one of the angels of Satan. You ever think about that? There's two classes of angels. Those are of God and those of Satan. I'm not saying God can't send an angel, but be careful. I've seen the light at the end of the tunnel. Better be careful. Maybe it's a train. And if you don't get out of the way, it's going to run your butt over. And then you really see what death is. Oh, you see the light. Maybe it's all the drugs and you're in the operating ta table with all that bright light. 
Therefore, it is no great thing, don't marvel, there's no great thing, if his ministers, who is the his? Run back to Satan, verse 14. If his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, they look right, they act right, they perform right, but they are ministers of Satan. Whose end? Whose end shall be according to their works. You don't want that to happen. According to their works. According to their works. Revelation. Revelation chapter 20. People get, you always run to Revelation 19, Revelation 20, Revelation 19, Revelation 20. Verse 12, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the book. What's those words? According to their works. You're going to get. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. The death and hell do the dead that were in them, and they were judge every man according to their works. If you sit under a liar in a ministry, that entire ministry will be played out before the entire congregation, all the Christians, all the angels, and everybody. If that guy is a liar, that guy is a phony, that guy is cheating as well, whatever that guy has done, it will be played out. <coughs> before all. Uh, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how those cannot bear them that are evil. That's not the last seen church age. They all are welcome. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. Remember what we just read in 2 Corinthians 11? And are not. They're not apostles. And found them to be liars. You know what the Laodicean church age does? We love it. Oh, you're so great. So wonderful. Oh, we keep on, keep on lying to us. They don't say it like that. Look at that guy's over there. He's talking about Christmas. He's talking. He's, That's, uh, he's making me upset. Make him be quiet. Make him shut up. Because I don't want to hear it. I know. He's wrong. And, you know, he puts a check into the offering. And, you know, we can't offend him either. And blah, 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 blah. 